Welcome back to Leaders and Legends on WDUR 1490 AM with your host, Steve Rao, and I'm here with uh, Pastor Dumar Harsha from First Baptist, and um, he's also the chairman of the Triangle Martin Luther King Committee, and he and I are working together on uh, some programs. And so, uh, Pastor, once again, we had a great first segment with you, and let's talk a little bit about the Triangle Martin Luther King Committee. So, um, when did you get involved with this? organization as the chair and then what is it um, empowered to do yeah I actually got involved with uh, Martin Luther King celebrations here when I first arrived to the city of Raleigh uh, as senior pastor at First Baptist Church through the invitation of Mr. Bruce Leitner and through the years I supported uh, the Raleigh Wake uh, Martin Luther King Celebration Committee eventually became co-chair and also worked with um, a center project uh, that, that, that that we had and in the early days uh, when I arrived they had already started on the Memorial Gardens, but that they extended part of it with a display of bricks, uh, Memorial Bricks, and I, I participated in that and, and worked very closely with Mr. Leitner through the years for all the various celebrations we had, and, and those were great with his leadership and the committee and so many people in the community from uh, the church community, the business uh, sector, as, as well as uh, colleges and universities. And, um, uh, and what happened was Mr. Leitner retired, and so so, so out of that, it's been about three, what, three or four years now. But out of that, then we formed um, the Triangle Martin Luther King Committee. Uh, uh, partially to, to, you know, we, it continues the tradition. This is our 36th annual breakfast. It's happening uh, on Monday morning at 7.15 a.m. in Research Triangle and with all the other activities that will take place on, on that day. But also it, it represents a, a, a new strategy, if you will, or a a new engagement concerning engaging a new uh, generation of people, younger people, and uh, having activities not just in January, but also all year long, um, and to begin to apply the principles of Dr. King to uh, the challenges that we have in the social setting today in, in our cities and in, in the society in America. And I think that goes to sort of what I talked about at the beginning of the program. So, you know, we've got this committee, yes. and we kick it off the year with these events and at the end of the program we're going to give everyone the website to go and sort of go through the program um, but you know we, we've got the, the father of India Mahatma Gandhi hmm. and the civil disobedience movement and then Dr. King got inspired by that and hmm. practiced many of these pra you know right. civil disobedience mm -hmm. but those civil rights movements are so c very connected in terms yes. of this whole mm -hmm. issue of equality and social death justice. Right. And so do you believe, and it sounds like you've already answered the question, but that the role of this Triangle ML committee is mm -hmm. to try to bring more awareness of social justice, not just in January, but throughout the course of the year. Yes, without a doubt. And we see part of our role is educating the current, uh, the present, the contemporary generation in terms of what Dr. King said beyond the I Have a Dream speech. Uh, which is poetic, beautiful, often referred to. But, but in order to understand what Martin Luther King really represented and those who worked with him, it was a whole movement and not just him, uh, you really need to listen to his other presentations and get a, a sense of his heart because he really was a revolutionary. And um, in the same way that Gandhi was in his early years of maturation, Dr. King uh, was tremendously affected by Gandhi's success, his writing, uh, his his philosophy and and that really was what helped the movement in the south become so successful uh, because I, I as a child of the 60s I lived through the Black Panther Party and the US group and the black power movement and the nation of Islam in those days and and you had many uh, people in the midst of the struggle in the 60s uh, looking at a variety of, of means of change in America but but dr. King was the only one that provided non violence. He's the only one that yeah. used love as a force. He's the only one that really talked about how we need to meet even our so-called enemy. 
uh, the one who opposes us and learn how to build a bridge of reconciliation. And, and, and that was inspired by those who influenced him, Mordecai Johnson, Howard Thurman, one of his mentors, met with Mahatma Gandhi personally. And, and, and those, those, those African Americans in those days, who did, they brought that back to Atlanta, the, the, the center of intellectual life in those days, and Howard University in D.C. And, and Martin was a recipient of, of what they were excited about, about how India changed through, through Gandhi and believed that if used correctly, it could do the same thing in the United States of America. And, and so, it did. And so that's a great segue into my next comment and question is that I think that we have this large Indian South Asian community here in Morrisville, Cary, Western Wake County. Um, and we need to, I think, and we are, you and I are already doing it, but one of the reasons we want to bring Reverend Harshaw on the program is to talk about how we can get these communities to work together. Uh, it already started with me being involved in that event last year, which was historic. Um, again, on Monday, I'll be speaking, introducing an Indian dance performance. Um, the Nathia Dance Academy out of Morrisville is going to be performing. You know, so, but mm -hmm. what can we do to better connect these two communities so that mm -hmm. it's a reminder that India's birth as a nation was mm -hmm. basically based on the same ideals that Dr. King was fighting for. Right, exactly. And here we are living in North Carolina, African American, Indian American, South Asian. Mm -hmm. How do we bring these communities together? Yeah, it, it seems to me the first thing we need to do is revisit mm -hmm. why they were successful and the principles that made those movements successful. And then we need to set up uh, avenues of dialogue to really seek to understand each other, not change each other, but understand each other, and then find ways that we can partner and work on common issues and problems and projects in order to demonstrate how these can work in the 21st century. And the ongoing talking and spending time together, networking, I think will solve a lot of issues. That's fantastic, and I think so. We want to encourage everyone to. Um, we're gonna we're gonna in a few minutes go through the the program, but I I want to reiterate the importance of um, this for. And I think the pastor really hit it on the head. Our youth, and and that that's a good segue into um, my next question. Um, is we're seeing a lot of division right now um, from the political spectrum in North Carolina, yeah. and you and I have spoken about this. Mm -hmm. Um, we're seeing a lot of hateful things being said by political leaders um, coming into presidential campaigns. Mm -hmm. And what is your opinion as a leader of faith mm -hmm. of this whole notion of reconciliation? Yes. It just seems like we're getting so away from that. Right. And yeah, then, do you have right, any thoughts right. on that? Yeah, it, it, it really is depressing to see people who are entrusted with so much responsibility use that as a platform to uh, present to others ideologies that really divide people. And, and dehumanize people and take us backwards in terms of racism, uh, in, in terms of hating other people for their lifestyle or for their class or their economic status or for their, their origin of birth. I mean, those things really make no sense in the 21st century America. And it's, it's depressing to see that there's a platform for that. But yet you understand those Americans who are so afraid of change and the America doing Leave it to Beaver or Andy Griffith era or those wonderful, great shows that inspired all of us. Uh, to, to, to see them then deal with the America that we now live in, I guess for them is very challenging. And it seems to me some of these people are speaking to that fear. Uh, speaking to that resistance, and and that's why they're popular for the moment. But but they're not going to stop uh, this diversity in America. They're not going to put women back in the house to do nothing but cook meals and have babies, and not have responsible roles in business and in society and politics. Uh, they are not going to uh, push away black ownership of businesses. Or, or go back to the day when there was not a black quarterback for any NFL team whatsoever or even thought about. Uh, you know, so, so it, it appears that, that, that one in particular seems to be speaking to the fear, uh, of, of, uh, perhaps the Anglo male, 
uh, when he wakes up and sees that the world has changed so much and feels more vulnerable than ever. And, 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 uh, and, and I think that is uh, unfortunate. I think it creates more problems than we need, but it will not stop the progress of diversity in this nation or the world. And that's exactly what we're trying to do in North Carolina is bring the practices of great heroes, I call them superheroes, uh, Gandhi, King, Mandela, to teach mm -hmm. our youth. Mm -hmm of the very fundamental basics of reconciliation, of peace, yeah, right. of working mm -hmm. together. And, yes. and in my opinion, we're going to take one last break and then come and close out yes, the yes. event. But, but in my opinion, what's driving a lot of this is we're becoming a, a, a nation that's driven by sound bites, mm -hmm. uh, a nation right. that's driven by op-ed pieces mm -hmm. or uh, just yes. you know, the political money on both sides of the spectrum right. that's coming in to define these elections. A billion dollars to win the presidency. Right. Uh, Twenty million dollars to win a U.S. Senate seat. Mm. Um, Thirty years ago, in North Carolina won a legislative seat. Uh, Brad Crone, he's one of my friends, he's a political consultant, was saying that his first legislative campaign, it was a big deal because they had to raise $100,000. Now in Wake County, a legislative campaign is well north of a million, 500,000 to a million dollars. And even the city council, um, both times I've had to raise about $18,000 to win. I mean, for a city council seat. Um, but the point is that the more we raise money, the more we're driven by the media, the more we're saying things that pander to a certain group. Right. And I think that we need to really take a stop and mm -hmm. say to ourselves that we may have differences. Right. Uh, but we can put aside those differences and try to work for the common good. Because at the end of the day, what America was founded on was diversity. Mm -hmm. People left any nation in the world mm -hmm. and came here. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. To pursue what? A dream. Some of them came yes. for freedom. Some of them came for uh, starting businesses. Uh, our community came to study medicine, engineering, open up hotels, and businesses. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, right. and, 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 you know, but the thing is that we're all here together. Right. And so right. I didn't mean to get on my soapbox, but I do think it's really important that if you're I want the children, our children to listen to this radio show this weekend. I want them to listen to Pastor Harsha and understand that they're really our hope. I'm investing a lot yes. of time as a, as a public servant, mm -hmm. not so much for myself, but for my own children, mm -hmm. because I want them to live in a world where they feel like they can trust. Right, right, right. Um, mm -hmm. And it's gotten to the point where we take the television off at night because it's just one bad story after another. Right, right, um, exactly. You know, and so, well, on that note, we're going we're gonna, to um, come back after a quick station break, and then we're going to talk about how you can be more involved with the Triangle MLK weekend events. We'll be right back. 